that people of God that are called to be the first responders. You know, as people of God, we are called to be the ones that, that bring the solution, which isn't just the physical solution, but also the eternal solution. Welcome to On the Ground with Samaritan's Purse, a podcast taking you to the front lines and behind the scenes of our work around the world. I'm your host, Christy Graham. As many of you know, the southeastern region of Louisiana was struck by Hurricane Ida on August 29th, which was the 16th anniversary of Katrina, making it so much more painful. And this area has been hit over and over by many storms. And so as this storm hit, it made it more personal for our team. As names and faces came to mind, our team was personally connected with many people that they've worked with over the years. We thought of church partners that we've banded with over the past as we worked with Hurricane Slora and Delta, and our presence is there on the ground with the Rebuild Program. Knowing the storm was brewing, it was a Category 4, and we actually had already pre-positioned teams ready to respond, so we were able to quickly get into the area and open up three different locations in Louisiana. Teams are helping to clear debris, tarp roofs, and salvage precious belongings, but all of this while offering hope and compassion to people that have lost everything. I talked with Chandler Sailors. She is our program manager in Louisiana, and she's on the ground and was able to give us quick updates of what Samaritan's Purse is doing. The impact of the storm made our call really hard. We actually had to call back several times because Wi-Fi and cell service were spotty. But after many attempts, we were able to connect over Zoom. Yeah, so Hurricane Ida hit southeastern Louisiana as a Category 4, and that means winds of well over 150 miles per hour, which has caused significant damage to homes. Uh, some homes have been demolished. Many have trees on them or are missing their roofs. And then also it brought a lot of storm surge, which means it flooded homes uh, up to the ceiling in some. So there's a lot of damage. And Chandler, you know, this, I mean, that's horrible and horrific, but we know that that area has had storms upon storms. So this trauma upon trauma, this isn't new to them. So what, what does that do when, when you have a, a storm of this magnitude, but they've also been devastated in the near, you know, in the, in the past? What does that do to a community? Yeah, so for many people, they talk about past storms, even Katrina, though it was 16 years ago, like it just happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so devastating to them personally and as a community that they're, you know, for many, they feel like they just got back on their feet after Katrina and then after previous hurricanes and now this. So we use the phrase hurricane fatigue quite often in the field and you see that people seem very defeated by the whole process. The flip side of that is many of them have gone through this before. So they know the next steps and they know how difficult those steps are gonna be. Uh, So people are really needing hope right now. And uh, yeah, we would ask that if, if you could just be praying that those people would be filled with endurance Uh, for the road that's ahead. The community is feeling semi-distraught. There there are people going, man, 16 years ago this happened, now it's happened again. And um, there's this feeling of we rebuilt once and it feels hopeless to actually do this another time, to rebuild a second time. But on the other end of that spectrum, this is a community that has a lot of resolve. So they have rebuilt once. They know what it takes to rebuild. And so they know we did it once, we could do it again. Uh, There are most people in the area are saying, we're not going anywhere, we're staying. We're gonna rebuild, even though we may wake up in the morning and feel distraught, we're gonna fight through that feeling and get to the resolve that that has been put within us to stick around and to make a difference, not only in, in our lives, but in the lives of our neighbors and friends and family members and people in this entire community. So what is Samaritan's Purse doing to respond to the effects of the storm? Maybe can you can you walk us through the locations we're at and what we're doing? So Samaritan's Purse is on the ground in three different locations in Louisiana. So we are in Hammond, Homa, and then the greater New Orleans area. And we're trying to mobilize volunteers by partnering with local churches and bringing volunteers in from all across the U.S. to get them out to these homes to help people physically, you know, remove the debris, cut the trees, get their homes gutted, part their roofs, 
so that we can prevent further damage as more rain comes in the future and hopefully get them a few steps down the road to recovery. Uh, but more than that, we want to be a, a evidence of Jesus to them. We want to provide them with hope and encouragement. Like I said, they're feeling defeated. So even if we don't lift a finger, just coming to their home, being on their property with them as listening ears, and then also as uh, people that just can provide them with the love and hope hope that we have in Jesus, uh, that's a tremendous effort on its own. And definitely our, our primary purpose in being here to be the light in the darkness and to give them some hope to get them through into the next day. Um, and as you mentioned, houses needing to be tarped. Uh, are people living in these homes that are, yeah, still having water damage and mold? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, in many cases, people don't have an option to go to a shelter, uh, whether it be that they have animals they're caring for or, you know, health issues. So for some of them, they are living in their homes, sleeping in them. Uh, oftentimes they don't have a generator, so that means no air conditioning. Uh, and then when it rains, water is coming in and then producing more and more mold growth. So there are still quite a few people that we're aware of that are living in those conditions. I'm sure there's hundreds or thousands more that we're unaware of uh, that are staying in their homes. So the more volunteers we're able to mobilize, the faster we can move through these requests and hopefully the quicker we can get these people back in safe, safe um, and healthy living conditions. So people either evacuated or stayed, and those that sheltered in their homes are still there. And I mean, watching the news and just hearing no power, no, you know, just even talking to you today was difficult with connection and Wi-Fi and phone coverage. What does that do? What is it like on the ground? Are stores open? What are people doing on a daily basis? It, yeah, so it's been quite a challenge. So when we got on the ground, there there really weren't many people here uh, the first day after the storm. Millions do not have power, even still today. We thank the Lord have generator power here at the church to be self-sufficient and to help um, help get need, meet the needs of the people. But the, mass, the vast majority still do not have power. Therefore, it's very hard to find food, ice, water, basic needs are hard to come by. And for many, they are not being met, especially those that aren't able to go out seeking it uh, themselves. So it's been a challenge for a lot of people. As you pass by gas stations, uh, some of them are on generator power and able to function. You'll see 50 to 100 people standing around each pump with gas cans in their hand. Uh, so it, it's really a crisis. You know, we're asking people to pray that uh, the power companies will be able to restore power quickly. The grocery stores will be able to start coming back online and that people can start having easier access to food and water. So, our faith has gotten us through a lot of that. And, you know, we stay close in prayer. And that's, I think that's important when you go through situations like this. You know, not everybody has a Bible at their side. You know, I know cell phones have those available capabilities, but when you're dealing with a situation like this and you have um, no, no resource like electricity uh, and you've, you've lost everything in your house and you, you can't find the, the resources you normally use, um, the power of prayer is amazing. I cannot imagine, because um, even hours without it is difficult, but these are, you were talking weeks. Um, I know you have responded to so many disasters, um, and each one's so different and unique. Um, maybe what what is different from this one, and what are you learning? We have been to Louisiana a lot as a ministry, and then many of our staff personally, we've been to this area uh, for months at a time. So it is interesting coming back, especially so soon after Hurricane Laura and Hurricane Delta, because we have so many personal connections here, not just with local government and law enforcement, but also with churches. So we know these people <laughs> as we're watching the storm path come in, we're, we're thinking of actual names and faces of people that have already been hit and hurt by storms in the past. So uh, there's good and bad to that. Um, the good is when we get on the ground, we're well received and we already have people to connect with to serve. So that's been a great thing. Uh, the bad is that we, it's very personal for many of us. We just made some great connections, but 
obviously it's the Lord. Uh, He's making those connections and it's just been a, a sweet time. Thank you for what you're doing and thank you for radiating Christ and truly giving people hope. So can you talk to me about, we're in three locations, volunteers. How, how has it been getting a response? The local response, as expected, has been pretty slow because people here locally had to evacuate. So here at our host church, several of the men and women that were able to come back into the area soon and help have been doing so. So there's about 10 to 15 people here uh, that are going out to, to help TARP and, and get home secure if they can. Uh, but like you said, the vast majority have been impacted themselves. They don't have power. They have children. So to come back into the area uh, would be you know, putting them at risk. So we're really depending on our out-of-state volunteers to show up, uh, to come and fill our camps that we have set up ready for them uh, to you know, really pick up the torch and hold up the arms of the people in this area. I guess besides you know, praying for help, yeah, how would, how would you ask us to pray? Definitely pray for endurance for those that ha- are going through this, that are victims of the hurricane, but like you said, have been victims time and time again to hurricanes, to natural disasters, that the Lord would just strengthen their hearts. Uh, and, you know, when we're at our, our weakest, that's when he's able to display his strength the most. So that's a good prayer for the believers, but then for the unbelievers, that this devastation in their lives might be the thing that, that points them back to the cross. Maybe that introduces them to Jesus and the hope that we can have in him, that he is our anchor in the storm. And I feel like for someone that has lost everything in, in their physical life and has lost uh, the ability to control their environment, that it's a really good time for them to be receptive to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit. So yeah, we would ask that you pray for that, for opportunity, uh, that the Lord would send the volunteers here that need to be here the ones that the homeowners need to meet and for our homeowners that they would be receptive to the Holy Spirit as we come to their properties, for the community as a whole, that they would be receptive to what the Lord is trying to communicate to them. But then physically, that you would just continue to pray that the power would be restored, that people would be able to have access to food and water again. We've seen God provide in some incredible ways this past week. So we know he's active and working here and that can you know, sovereign in every bit of it, but we don't doubt him. But uh, we're just clinging to his word and speaking that into as many lives as we can. Uh, and, you know, Romans 8, 25 through 28, we just keep repeating that over and over that we're hoping for what we don't see and eagerly waiting for it. So what we do see is dev- devastation and where the disaster struck. But what we don't see is how God is using it uh, to plant seeds and to bear fruit. And we're eagerly waiting to see that in expect, great expectation. So we're just so thankful uh, for his hand on this deployment and, and what he's going to do in the future with it. Thank you for tuning in today. Throughout my conversation with Chandler, I was reminded that in the midst of complete hopelessness, God is our strength. During this devastation, I would ask you to pray for these families that are weathering the aftermath of another storm. Psalm 91, 15 through 16 says, He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This specific part of Louisiana seems to be hit over and over again. And as we speak, another tropical storm is gearing up to hit the Louisiana area. They're anticipating more flooding on top of the already damaged homes. There are hundreds of work orders coming in each day, and we're in desperate need of help. The local community has been impacted so greatly that there just aren't enough day volunteers. We really need the out-of-state volunteers to come serve. And so I encourage you, if you have time and you're able, um, again, you don't have to have work experience. I encourage you to just look into coming. You can go to spvolunteer.org to get more information. Um, We need the body of Christ to to quickly work into action because this community, so many had to evacuate or their own homes have been destroyed. And so we just need out-of-state help more than ever for this storm. So I encourage you to look into that, encourage you to just be a light in a dark time. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless you.